Please note that this video contains spoilers for the subject and the series and or franchise leading up to this entry. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. X-Men The Last Stand movie thoughts. In the comic Dark Phoenix as well, Jean also asks the X-Men to kill her so that she doesn't kill anybody else. And here when she kills dozens of people in seconds, it doesn't have dramatic weight because they are, you know, she kills almost no one that we know much less care about, and no time is spent reflecting on it. It's not... In the comic, they use the fact that she killed a lot. You know, that's not near the end of the comic. That's, excuse me, that's something that happens, and then everything after that in the rest of the comic is, you know, has that, you know, reflects what has happened. They, they all have to deal with, they actually, they, you know, they care about Jean. Scott even loves her. You know, Lo Logan probably is, yeah. But she killed a lot of people and if they don't, yeah, if, if she isn't prevented from doing so again, she may do so again. But here it's just, you know, you could you could completely remove the her, you know, killing all those people, they're the climax, and it wouldn't really like Wolverine was already you know or already figured that he's going to have to kill her to stop her to, to save the you know And, you know, in the comic, you know, you have the phoenix shape for when she uses her powers, which, you know, they, they have something slightly like that at the end of the second one in the, in the water. And she basically, you know, she, she hungers and that, that's part of why she you know, she kills that planet because of hunger and as I said in the review, you know, here why does she really do anything? Like, Magneto you know, Magneto says that the, you know, they're going to use the cure on just anyone does she does she really fear the cure, and if so, why does she wait to, you know, it's only there at the very end that she really does anything, you know, for almost the entire movie, she just, she, she does nothing. The, the, you know, when, right after she's come back, she kills Scott for some reason, we don't, you know, it's never said specifically that, oh, she'll kill anyone she comes near. You know, she certainly doesn't kill, she doesn't seem to kill a single person in all the time that she's just with Magneto. She, you know, then she kills the, the professor, and she, yeah, she gets upset when, when Logan asks about Scott. And she kills the professor because he's trying to control her again and that that makes sense that to her it's like self-defense or she's you know it's it's her frustration all these years of having been subdued but yeah what what after that if if she feels so greatly about the so strongly about the cure why doesn't she go alone why is she so willing to just do what Magneto said you know he even says 
they have their weapons we have ours and then he indicates her and she look you know she's it's not like she's not paying attention you know she looks back and there's this why is she completely content now with just being referred to as their weapon now and in the comics she's also a threat to the universe not quote unquote just earth you know she's less of a threat than the faux cerebro was and two she's actually she might be even less of a threat than Magneto's machine the first one so yeah to be fair it is difficult to top the faux cerebro from two and I suppose we should be grateful that you know it's not just it's not genocide a third time that's the threat and as well in, in the comic you know Wolverine tries to kill Jean as a last resort and and she asks him to and they try to use technology to limit her powers so that they don't get out of hand and Xavier puts psychic limitations on her although in the comic it's more recent and Xavier feels guilty for Jean being so dangerous and Jean attacks Xavier with her powers in the comic as well Jean goes to her parents house and you know she's basically she's confused but in the comic her parents and even her sister are actually there you know and in, in this it's basically just a setting it's somewhere she went that Xavier and Magneto both knew about and you know apparently no one ever calls the cops in that neighborhood it's it's you know they you know no one seems to call the cops when she uses her powers she certainly isn't at all concerned that anyone that, that it'll cause any trouble for her or anyone else to just lift all that stuff that's you know and yeah during the the fight where the the house raises no one ever seems to yeah again in, in the first two these it tends to be either the scene is so short and the you know and the setting so remote or the like that you know that's why no one come you know I just rewatched the the CinemaSins you know everything wrong with on all three movies and he's like you know how come no one notices all this stuff happening at this famous monument well the Brotherhood killed every single guard around people may have noticed people may have called in authorities but it's gonna take them a little while to get there because every single person who was there specifically to you know just in case someone would attack there have been killed by the Brotherhood you know it's it's gonna take a you know it's it's like you've got all this water around it and you know the the and the 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 big party of all the powerful people is several hundred meters away in addition to the water so yeah in this yeah it they it can just happen right there in the middle of nowhere just maybe i'm i i might be wrong but i feel like considering just how many mutants Magneto assembles wouldn't it be possible for them to you know just like don't they have some way of seeing if like a huge amount of people are in the the forest in like you know like like just satellites around the country just see if uh, you know again in the first one oh well there's just there are four of them it's it's not that difficult to keep just a few people hidden and but yeah and in the comic as well you know Jean will 
you know, stroll their way to the surface, but then be, you know, supplanted by Phoenix. And Wolverine kills Jean at the very end, which means that though it's not someone he has equal powers to, it is still, you know, in the climax, he fights and kills someone that he has history with. Although here it's not as much a fight, it's just he, you know, sh strains to walk up to her and, yeah. You know, really, Wolverine never in this fights someone that he really... Where, you know, this is a person that whose powers can really, you know, match with it. He, he kills a bunch of mutants, but he kills them in more or less the same way that he kills soldiers in the second movie. You know, there really isn't... It might as well have been. That's, that's the thing. Most of the mutants in this might as well have just been people. Other than the, the names, of course, but the rest of them, yeah. But the, yeah, you know, in, in each of the three, he does end up killing someone that he has history with and who is a strong mutant that, you know, someone like him would be necessary to kill. And, yeah, in, in this case, it's not just backstory history, comic book history, comic book backstory that we don't see on the screen. It's actually someone that he's had history with in the first, in, in all three movies, but it's the least impactful of all three climax Wolverine attacks. And apparently, you know, given that, you know, Sabretooth was supposed, supposed to, you know, survive the first one, and the, you know, apparently, my friend Kermit had commented on the um, on one of my videos for the second one recently that supposedly Yuriko would have returned for the third film so I don't know I guess it's possible that Jean would have come back as well considering that the movie brings back almost everyone that it kills that you know that have a name to them yeah her and Scott might as well have come back. Now the you know if part of it is of course that if Wolverine did not stab a female mutant who's been shown to be strong in the chest, then it wouldn't be a climax in the film of the trilogy. In the comic, she's actually you know the the Shi'ar Empire want to put her on trial, and you know if you if you don't know where they, you know, where they live, it's you know, apparently the same place as Star Wars because they're both in a galaxy far far away, and apparently you know Phoenix says I am what I am, so Popeye. This does actually fit in most of the elements of the comic. It's just that, you know, that it doesn't do them particularly well. And, of course, it, you know, it changes them to where they fit with how, you know, the, the reality, that the first, the, yeah, the world that the first two movies set up. But in the comic, it's, you know, a... It's basically a symbiote. It's not, quote unquote, just her powers being really powerful. So, you know, in in the comics, if she ha could have been given the cure, although that wasn't an element of that comic, it wouldn't really have been enough. It it would have made the Phoenix much less powerful, of course, if she didn't have mutant powers or you know cosmic powers. But there would still be a cosmic being inside of her at times taking over, you know, I, maybe she wouldn't be going around killing entire planets, but, you know, it might be like, you know, maybe she would become a, just a, a minor killer or something, you know, go around and 
kill some, you know, that's, that's, that's something that some, you know, some killers are motivated by just because I can, I'm going to kill this person. And that's some of what drives comic Phoenix. So, yeah, I, I do, I do think that the movie does a decent job of establishing, you know, they couldn't just, you know, I want to say that the, yeah, it's the it's Ron Hilton's abridged script for the movie that suggests you know just throw the the mutant kid at me. But you know, and and you know, it and others suggest you know use the the cure needles on her. But basically, we do see that when you know they're they're near the end, nothing can actually approach her without disintegrating other than Wolverine because he heals so you know that does basically make sense that does work but you do have to wonder you know the every, everything that's done near the end of the climactic battle seems like it could have been done earlier the you know, I, I'm not sure I see why they needed to throw a lot of... it's Yeah, it's because it's a Hollywood movie action scene. That's why they have a ton of people running at each other and then fighting like that. You know, if the... the you know, if the X-Men tried to attack Magneto or... Phoenix earlier than yeah and and it's also like where exactly were the troops that suddenly show up and then shoot at Jean or, or Phoenix you know were were they waiting for something specific you know I get you know whatever Hollywood movies have you know the the time it works out I can accept that but it seemed like the the majority of the troops had been you know a lot of them had lost their weapons and a number of them you know were were just fighting the I mean the straight you know the only reason that there's suddenly this bunch of people who this this bunch of military who have cure weaponry is because they needed something to trigger Phoenix. And some say that, you know, Wolverine is willing to kill her but not have sex with her. And, you know, he he almost does have sex with her, but then he realizes, you know, this this isn't, she, she's not being herself. You know, it's, it's basically the, the too drunk to consent kind of thing. If he had sex with, with Jean, in that situation then clearly it wouldn't be yeah and you know he's only willing to kill her because she's a significant threat why does Magneto not just grab some of the bridge lifted extremely high in the air and smash it onto the island. I'm, I'm not the first person to suggest this, but again, the only answer is they wanted a big, you know, Hollywood action climax. And again, the first two movies, there's no, there's no time where he could have done something like this and, you know, he, he just doesn't for some reason there's simply no the the first movie he was specifically trying to avoid you know he wasn't he wasn't looking to kill the powerful people he just needed to put the machine high enough up that it would reach that far and yeah and the, the moment he has a chance to use his magnetic powers to eliminate some of the x-men he does exactly that and he does a really good job of it. And the second one, yeah, there's, you know, the the 
the times in the movies, in the first two, where he has a chance to fight a lot of people using his powers, he does exactly that, you know, he pulls the, the guns on them, and then, you know, in this, they just, you know, in the first one, it's, you homo sapiens and your guns, and then in this, it's just, you hu humans and their guns. It's, <laughs> Yeah, okay. If I guess if you change a word or two, it's a new line, what whatever. And in the second one, you know, he pulls the pins on all those grenades in order to Yeah, but in this he just doesn't do the the smart thing anyway. You know, and then he could send a physically strong pawn dig through the rubble and at some point that pawn will find the, you know, he'll lose his powers, and okay, that means the kid is nearby, or he'll find the corpse, and the fact that he didn't lose his powers means that, you know, and even if not, then go ahead and make sure to finish off the kid right there. Actually, he has the mutant who can find exactly where, you know, yeah, exactly where the, the cure, exactly where Leech is. Why does, how does Kitty manage to trick trick Juggernaut into running through walls he didn't need to and then she runs off she might have been told where like on the on the plan where the her room where, where Leech's room is sure you know I'm, I'm sure Beast could get that and then get it to her but why does Juggernaut not know the Brotherhood is the group with the mutant who can tell exactly where Leech is it's just and and why send Juggernaut why not send Psylocke and the the other Omegas, you know, the only they're they're clearly quite capable of finding people. In the you know they find the the you know Warren's yeah really Warren Worthington the second since Angel is the third and the you know yeah why not send them in to get the the kid? What exactly? What can the what can Juggernaut do that they can't? That yeah, and again, if it's it's again, it's because they they didn't they didn't sit down and write what strategies with these different mutants. Some of them incredibly smart and incredibly good at, at using their powers. What would they do? No, they wrote what would look cool or what would we like to stage in this action scene? You know. Kitty can fight Juggernaut, of course, because the one thing Juggernaut can do is physically, you know, yeah, and she can, he can physically hurt you or physically, you know, break through walls and such, but she can just let, you know, yeah, she can let you go right through her. What exactly is he going to be able to do, you know, while, yeah, the, the, you know, if, if all of the Omegas were dealing with her, then, yeah, that I, d I don't see how she could, she would be able to, yeah. Now, apparently the, the bridge was supposed to be around the middle, and it was supposed to be that Alcatraz really was a prison, which, you know, yeah. That would have made more sense, but you know, than it being it being a prison rather than a lab. But the you know the bridge being a climactic scene. Just Deacon points out that it feels more like a climactic scene, and I do think if they were gonna have the bridge scene in any of these movies at all, it definitely needed to be you know a, a climactic yeah. And as others have pointed out, why does Magneto not do anything about Wolverine and Colossus? Does he really feel that the throwing of cars is that much bigger? Of you know, you have like what is it? Excuse me, six X Men. He could take out two of them just like that. And again, in the first two movies, there's no you know he also and he lets Wolverine go when he has him. You know, when, when Wolverine has found their hiding spot and knows their plans, 
he has no reason to let him go. But, you know, in the first one, when he lets Wolverine go, when he's just captured Rogue, he doesn't have any reason to really think that, you know, why would they be able to, you know, yeah, he doesn't think that they could stop and it would it would be a bit of a hassle to have to you know what just drag him but you know the it doesn't take long once he's in the air for him to drop the the guns and I suppose they could yeah if, if they tried to like strap Wolverine to the outside of the helicopter one second using metal to pin him to it they could have brought him to the you know to to their hideout or dropped him off somewhere or something but you know if they I think that he felt that he was so close that they couldn't stop you know if they could you know if if Either the, you know, he, he probably figured that they wouldn't be able to use Cerebro to, you know, since Mystique had sabotaged it, that they wouldn't be able to use Cerebro to find any of them, and if he took Wolverine with him, then they have an X-Man that they have to deal with there, you know, I suppose there's even some possibility that he might have been able to find some way to signal the rest, the rest of them and, you know, bringing him along and then just dropping him in the water somewhere. That would have had roughly the same effect of just leaving him there in the wrecks of the train. So, yeah. The... Let's see. The... And yeah, and, and when Wolverine comes into the, the tower itself, he just Yeah, he, he traps him there and he didn't know that Wolverine would be able to go that far to Yeah. And you know and, and Magneto you know, assures Pyro, Charles Xavier did more for mutants than you will ever know. My one greatest regret is that he had to die in order for cheap drama to... Yeah. Finally, one of these... I, I can't believe I'm going to say something positive about this film, but yeah. This one technically doesn't have a gunshot fake out. It almost does but you do clearly see he puts the clip in with the the symbol of the cure and even if, if you're like you can't quite recognize it clearly there aren't regular bullets in that thing no matter what it is those are not regular bullets you know the the cop shoots and immediately you see well you know it it's it it clearly isn't killing her it you know yeah and upon rewatch, I realized that in the second movie, not a lot of time passes. And in, the, in the first film, the moment that the, the gun fires, it actually, you know, it takes a whole second or two before we're shown that he didn't die at all. In the second one, technically, we do almost immediately see that the gun didn't kill the kid, but we do have this soldier in the, the X-Mansion, and, you know, there's no... It doesn't, we don't really have any reason to think that he isn't, you know, he, he might well kill the kid. And then we see him grab a gun and fire, and there's still, yeah. But in this, it's incredibly clear right away that it's not, yeah. And once Phoenix kills Xavier, she just gets up and walks with Magneto. And Magneto just lets her walk 
with him. And it's like, both of you clearly cared about Xavier. You know, no matter how much. Like, when when Jean first got in there, she, she was clearly not completely controlled by Phoenix. And it didn't... Yeah. But, but then she just gets up and walks away and, and I'm also not entirely sure how the every member of the Brotherhood just got away from there before any member of the X-Men were able to do anything to, to try to stop them or anything. But again, the, the movie wanted to have the action scenes that it, you know, yeah, the, the Ratner and others wanted the action scenes that they wanted and yeah the fact that it didn't really make a lot of sense you know the brotherhood and x-men alike were inside the house when it when it landed after the the raising so why why would the x-men be so much slower to get in there than the brotherhood And I understand Rogue taking the cure, and I also do, you know, I, I feel, you know, at, at least there is that little bit where we do see that she's, you know, it's, it's not just mentioned. I just don't quite understand how long has she, she we see her go in to take the cure way earlier. It's, you know, in, in the movie's chronology, I'm almost certain it's been days since she went in and, I mean, it's possible that she didn't take, the, you know, maybe she was right about to take it and then she changed her mind, broke free and used her wings. Nope. Anyway, she, and, and then she went in there later, I guess, but it just... Yeah, it, it seems like if you're going to show her go in there earlier, then why have her return that much later? And then, of course, you know, you have to wonder, is she even allowed at the school anymore if she's not a mutant? And I, I don't know if they're trying to say, like, you know, when, when you know, he says, this isn't what I wanted. No, it's what I wanted. I don't know if that's supposed to be like a her body, her choice kind of thing, but I don't know. I just I feel like it wouldn't have hurt if they just briefly had a few more lines about that and like yeah, and then you know in in they they shot an alternate scene where she said, you know, she just couldn't go through with it. She couldn't take the... And really, the, the deleted scenes, there's a lot of them that are... Yeah, a bunch of it is just, like, alternate, you know. Should we have Ro take the cure? You know, no, never mind. Let's have her not take the cure. Which is actually... Yeah. And, you know, one deleted scene... You know, and the release scene also changes whether or not Leech is there, and then I'll, you know, can he, does he still automatically suppress other mutant powers? Because that's going to get kind of annoying for the rest of them, but yeah. And, and one deleted scene has Beast not, you know, in office, but, you know, returning to the school because there's not, you can possibly do more politically. But, but yeah, it's, it's legitimately just they didn't know which they were going to go with. So, and, and that's also, like, the, the studio said, no, kill Cyclops, kill Xavier, and, and yeah. And, and then the, the filmmaker will go, wait a second, if we have Xavier transfer his, you know, for those who haven't, watch the commentary room, that's what happens. He transferred his mind to the comatose patient that was with Moira McTaggart, and according to the commentary track, that was actually Xavier's twin, which is why when we see him after this, he looks the same. But, 
yeah, they could have done more to, they could have made that clear, but yeah, you know, kill Scott, kill Xavier, but then Scott is never really confirmed dead. It's just, you know, they, they even made sure to not show that. They, they made sure to keep it off screen so that they could bring him back in case they, yeah, and and then, you know, Magneto even seems to still have just a, at least a little bit of his power, so yeah, the movie didn't actually change the status quo particularly. You know, the only person who's permanently affected is Jean, who is dead, which she was at the start of the film as well. The You know, you, you have to wonder why the X, you know, the X-Men basically want the... Scratch that. The... Singer has said that he, his third movie, X-Men 3, would have had Scott, you know, really messed up from emotionally from not from them not having been able to save Jean and building the danger room to make sure that they would get better having Phoenix go around the world rescuing trap mutants and yeah that that makes a lot of sense the yeah basically you know If, if you rewrote it to where Magneto, you know, to where most of what Magneto does in this film was done by Phoenix, you know, just have, yeah, you know, they, they find her an alkali late, she, you know, they, they bring her, and then after she runs away from the, the mansion, then she starts going around freeing mutants and doing what we saw Xavier Magneto, doing what we see in the movie Magneto do, and yeah, after the that that would also yeah that would give her character some some drive and actually we'd be able to tell what she was trying to do. Storm you does use her power slightly in the climax, but you know it it seems you know she uses lightning a little bit, but it it mostly seems like she's just scaring them. It seems to me like she could zap a bunch of them with lightning, she could send them flying using wind or the like. You know, again, first movie they're in a huge copper conductor, I mean you never thought they lived at a school. Second movie, they're underground. In this one, they're outside, it's open, it's not tight, and she barely uses her powers there. You know, some of it is that she has to fight the the super speed character. But yeah, other than that, it really seems like and I do, you know, I I don't think it's absolutely terrible. Excuse me, the little detail with you know the the glowing, you know, she she zapped her so much that the the piercing glows with the yeah but you know other than that it seems like she could have done a lot of but yeah she's she's just you know hold this line they're just you know it doesn't matter that you know I get Colossus and Wolverine it's difficult to get past them if you're just running and fighting I don't buy that Kitty can stop her I, I think we only see her like stop one person or something you know just phase through as they hit and then she grabs them from behind, knocks them down. Or, you know, she grabs them once she's on the other side of them. And, you know, and yeah, Storm, she just, she just uses lightning to kind of scare them away. Again, in that line. Instead of just, yeah, use, and it's also like, okay, I get that the, the super speed character goes you know, it, that's because Storm is really close, it's, you know, the hold this line. I'm not entirely sure why she doesn't 
you know that yeah that seems like that's also maybe not that great of a strategy considering that she would probably be more useful you know fly off to, to one of the sides I'm not saying go directly after Magneto I can imagine that he could you know yeah that could you know prove difficult although I feel like anything that he tries to throw at her she could probably like return or send flying with wind but yeah you know fly off to the side and then start zapping everyone before they get to the line so that you're not yeah Scott apparently drove his motorcycle from New York to Canada I tried I looked that up someone said that it was like a 10-hour drive so that's yeah and it didn't have to be that big. for one thing if you hadn't put the X on the motorcycle we could just assume okay he flew some of the way then he rented a motorcycle you know but as it is yeah why yeah and and you know I'm not saying why doesn't he use the jet yeah as far as we've seen they only have the one jet yeah maybe not maybe don't use the one jet just to go you know for for what is at at that point essentially sentimental reasons no that's but yeah it's it's and it's also only at the very end of the fight does it occur to the x men that maybe they could use the the cure against them you know and then they just briefly use it against magneto and that's it the you know, for some reason, the, the, the soldiers there seem to respect the X-Men. You know, they don't, you know, you, you'd almost expect like a, you know, Avengers 1 kind of thing. With, Why should we take orders from you and then briefly see them prove themselves and then, you know, okay. we should. But as it is, it's just, you know, I, I feel like Captain America would probably have said, you work for the U.S., I'm wearing the US flag, that means you work for me. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's just, you know, they, they seem to respect the you know the X-Men some give give them some kind of authority. So why don't the two of them just agree, okay, let's use cure? You know, really any single Yes, they you know give each of the X-Men a, a little like crate of cure and each of them can start using that you know just every time someone gets close enough jab them with it or somehow use your power in a way that yeah that's also if Storm had like a, a thing of yeah if, if Storm goes to to like her left, Magneto's right, and the 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 troops with Cure shoot directly at Magneto, and yeah, I mean, could he possibly block all of those shots all at once? And you know, if so, yeah, I I just I don't see how he could how they could. It it seems like they could be more you know do a better job there and and end the scene quicker and yeah i've reviewed other parts of this franchise the links are in the description box please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content